Welcome to Chorus Stories. Are you ready to meditate with Cory? Hi friends, make sure that you subscribe and you like this video and also press the bell because the bell will let you know when a new video comes out. If you love Heidi, Cherry and Vea, make sure that you go to the link below and you join the patron group. Then you'll be part of the cat club and you'll get three exclusive stories every month for just $7 a month. I hope you enjoy the meditation. I love you. Bye. Are you ready to meditate with Kari? Make sure that you're laying in your bed and you're really comfortable. Check that the light is just right. The room is just right. And you can settle down and relax your body. Hopefully, eventually, falling to sleep. Casey was laid in his bed. They'd just had Thanksgiving at their house and he was feeling kind of lonely. It was a nice day and everything, but he didn't have any brothers and sisters. He was just with his mum and dad. His aunties and uncles were busy this year, so it was just them just those three. And even though it was a lovely day, Casey felt lonely. He rolled over and turned on his cowboy light lamp and the figures of cowboys on horses, the shadows through the light, started walking around his room. He instantly felt a little bit more at peace. Internally, inside, he didn't feel so alone. Just because there were cowboys all over his room, walking their prairies on their horses. As his nightlight span around and around and around, Casey really wanted to travel to his past life tonight. Just to be around a lot more people. It was always so busy there. What with all the cattle, the animals, the farm animals, the people that worked on the farm, the people that lived in the farmhouse with him. He was never alone. Always busy, always with people. He yearned for that right now. Casey decided to travel in, to go back in time. He closed his eyes, took one big deep breath, and then another, and then his final third breath. When Casey came around, he was riding his horse Meadow. He'd been checking the cattle, making sure that there were no escapees, no calves that had lost their mums. He'd been riding Meadow all around the perimeter of his land, checking the fences, doing his daily routine, something that seemed to need to be done every single time he went. Yet, it was never something that he thought was boring. He loved it. He loved being out there in the meadows. He loved being on his horse meadow. He loved the smell of the fresh air, just being in nature always made him feel so much better. 
He was on the east side of his land. Everything looked fine. Until he spotted something. Up on one of the hills, he made a little clicking sound. The meadow stopped. He squinted his eyes so he could see better. There was something white moving on the hill, far over on his left. He stayed perfectly still. It was like Meadow and him both held their breaths. Not moving a muscle. The thing that caught his eye moved very slowly. And then he recognized just by how it moved what it was. A wolf. Casey loved wolves. In his normal everyday life, they were one of his favorite animals. But he knew in his past life, it meant trouble. The wolves might eat the coughs and then he'd lose money because his cattle is his property and that's how he makes a living as a cowboy. Every single one of them has a dollar sign over their head. Casey always had a rifle down on the left side of his saddle. He didn't travel without it here. There was always something that could maybe possibly be a dangerous situation, whether it was a bear or a coyote or a wolf. Or sometimes one of the cattle was injured and hurt and had to be saved and put down, put out of its misery. This was something Casey thought was really, really difficult, but it would be harder to leave an animal in pain than to end its misery. So it was really important he always had his rifle on, his saddle. And today was no exception. His arm reached down for it. But then he paused. He paused because he wasn't sure. He wasn't sure if this wolf was a threat at this time. And that was the last he did about the situation that day. But for many times over the next couple of weeks, Casey kept seeing this white wolf. He decided to name the wolf Arctic, like the Antarctic. He figured it was a male. That felt right to him for some reason. Sometimes he got a lot closer to the wolf, but the wolf never acted as if it was going to do something bad. It was always more like he was just watching Casey. Over time, the wolf got closer and closer and Casey let it. He figured by now if it was going to kill his cattle, he would do. And it hadn't. So he knew the wolf wasn't hungry. The wolf was visiting Casey regularly for some other reason. One day, Casey was sat down on the grass. It was lunchtime. He'd stopped to take a break. He was eating a sandwich. Meadow was just nibbling on grass. It seemed from nowhere as if Arctic had been watching him for a while. He came 
out of the trees and just stared at Casey. His fixed gaze was so intense. He had one green eye and one blue eye. He was that close. Casey just calmly stared back at the wolf. And they had a moment where that's all they did. They just stared at each other. And then this really strange feeling came over Casey where he felt like he knew the wolf. He knew Arctic. Like Arctic was a brother. Somebody close to him. Rationally, this didn't make sense. I mean, this was a wolf. But energetically, the wolf felt like someone else. And when Casey had this recognition, it was almost as if the wolf did at the same time. And the wolf moved closer and sat right next to Casey. And they just sat there. And Casey shared his sandwich with the wolf. And the wolf ate a little bit of the sandwich. And they both stared out at the sky, doing the same thing. But together. And that's when it hit Casey. He'd been lonely in his other world. Wishing he had more friends or a brother or a sister. And it was as if that calling from his heart had gone out to the universe and made Arctic turn up in this other time and place. A new friend, a companion. Arctic wasn't there all the time when Casey went out on his rounds, but when he was, they would come together and just sit together. Like long lost friends, and sometimes they'd watch the sunrise, sometimes they'd watch the sunset, and other times they'd just stare at the clouds together. Or watch the birds flying in the sky. And when Casey would come back to his normal world and wake up a boy in today's state, at this time, there was something about having Arctic that made him not even lonely in this time. It was like Arctic the wolf was an inner companion, a companion that he had in his heart, that was there constantly, as constant as the stars in the sky. Casey never felt lonely anymore. Isn't that interesting? The end.